Well, she basically said it all. Social media should uh, generate uh, profit. So that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you guys uh, up there, uh, back there can hear me, just go in front. I, know, um, I was standing there in the previous presentation and I couldn't hear things, so you can go ahead and decide. Right, so what I want to tell you today is something that we figured in our agent, in our digital agency, urbanmanagement.com, that works for our clients and with our clients. And we kind of learned it the hard way, and I'm going to tell it to you today for free so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Um, so you can adapt this approach. And also, I believe if you adapt this approach, the social media environment in Czech Republic as such will be much healthier. And that's something Adam was talking about at the very beginning of the conference today. And we as a social media people have the responsibility to you know, make the environment healthier so that our clients can raise their money and uh, that they are getting something out of social media, something valuable. But before I start into uh, my approach, let me just recap real quick, because all of you here are social media people, so I'll just recap all quick. Um, what are the six main benefits, or six new things, or six new propositions that the social media are bringing to us? Today. Of course, first is brand building, why social media and why the means of uh, people engaging with your content, uh, you can build your own brand and you can make it better and you can uh, you know, make the brand uh, seem nicer in their heads. That's number, one. number two, of course, is crowdsourcing. Now more than ever, it's very, very easy to crowdsource uh, almost anything. I'll just give you one example. Uh, we're working on a new website for our company. Our old website is nine years old and it's a crap. Uh, but we just uh, ask our fans on Facebook if there's any you know guy or uh, specialist who could give us uh, his opinion on our wireframes that we draw and we do. And hey, we got six amazing experts. Uh, consultants, and technicians, and developers uh, who would go and hang out with us and who would, you know, tell their opinions on our wireframes that will ultimately make our websites better. So that's crowdsourcing. In wireframes, you can crowdsource pretty much anything. Number three, of course, is help that it's much, much easier uh, for your customers to reach to you via social media than it is for them to call you and to write you a letter or something like that. So you are basically lowering the barriers that, and they can talk to you very easily very uh, in, in a non-formal uh, fashion so you can help them quicker and better. Number four, we've got networking of course. This applies mostly to your personal profiles that you network as we are doing here today, we are networking with each other, uh, but it can also apply to brands and Facebook pages. If, if you're a brand and if you're, say, developing a new product, you can make a Facebook group and you can uh, invite your influencers into the Facebook group and then you can run a sort of something like a focus group, which is totally for free. And that's how you can benefit from networking as well. Number five in here is feedback. Use social media as a feedback platform. Again, as with the support, it's now easier than ever to get feedback. Again, we're lowering the barriers, so anybody can give us their opinion. They just go on Facebook in two clicks, they can tell us what's wrong with us, what's wrong with our product, um, and so forth. So you will learn what's wrong with you better and quicker and more in a fashion that wasn't possible. And number six, and finally, that's the retention. And um, as the old saying uh, says, it is always easier and cheaper to retain your old customer than to acquire new customers each time. So that applies, of course, to social media as well. And then Facebook can really help you to 
you know, get your customers to buy for a second, third, fourth time. So these are the six advantages and six selling points of social media. Mind you, they're huge. But uh, there's uh, a little problem with that approach. And that is that uh, most of the clients just don't give a damn about these six things. Unless they see where the money is in it. So if you really want to convince your client that they, sh they should go on social media and then they, then, uh, that they will benefit from social media, you have to show them this. Your goal basically is to convince them that, your, that their social media activities will have an ROI of at least one. And that's, that's something I want you to remember if there's one thing you will remember from my presentation, that's this. You have to have ROI at least one. What, I mean, what do I mean by ROI one? It's a very simple equation. Here we have what do they spend uh, on advertising, say on Facebook, here that's uh, what they spend on you as an agency. Plus, uh, optionally, from time to time you have uh, some sort of outsource. If there's something you can manage as an agency, say you have to uh, make a huge photo shoot or uh, you develop an application and you don't have programmers in the agency, so you have to outsource that. So from time to time, there would be uh, a cost for outsource as well. And this is what the clients pays you. And in order to have an ROI at least one and bigger, this number has to be bigger than this number. And this number is, of course, revenue multiplied by gross margin. And the gross margin is pretty important because depending on the industry you are in, it differs a lot. So if you're selling clothes, uh, it can be 40%, 50%, 60%. If you're selling, say, electronic appliances, it can be as low as 12 or 11%. So, in each presentation, of course, you have to have a devil's advocate or uh, a devil himself. This is my devil. Here person's client here. And uh, the client, if you show him the equation, would tell you, yeah, that's nice, but you know, how do I know that the revenue is really coming from Facebook? And it's not coming from my other uh, digital marketing channels. Or it's not coming from an outdoor billboard campaign uh, that we launched three weeks ago. And that is a problem that can be solved. It's, it all comes down to attribution. And if you can really work with attribution, you can solve the problem, and then you can convince your client that your ROI will be at least one. Before I tell you how to work around the problem with attribution, I have a, a little internet link here where that's in half of my presentation, so it comes handy. And I want to urge you not to waste your time reading case studies. I mean, that's <laughs> That might be a second takeaway you will take from this presentation. Because as I was preparing these slides, and as I was thinking about the, all the case studies I read, um, and you know, the case studies I repeat to all from agencies, my friends, my posting, and everything, I realized something that was wrong with them. And that was that most of the case studies come from big companies, like Coca-Cola, uh, like airlines like telcos, like big banks, and, you know, companies and brands like that. But, and uh, we will have a uh, nice little test in here. Please raise your hands who here is from an agency or who is a freelancer who works directly with social media. That will be um, um, 50 people. Okay. And who out of you, or us, is actually working with, you know, Coca-Cola, British Petrol, KLM, or whatever? Who is actively working on a brand like that? Please raise your hands. Right. That's, that's kind of what I thought. So, I really find it absurd that we read case studies about telcos, that we would read 
case studies how Vodafone is replying to its customers on Twitter. I mean, how does it relate to our problems and the problems of our clients that we are solving on a daily basis? Well, the answer is it, it's not at all. It's not at all. So, don't read the case studies. And now back to the attribution problem. Of course, in uh, each revenue stream and in each uh, attribution model, you will have different layers of certainty uh, with which you can attribute that source, um, I mean, that revenue to the source at hand. This is the easy one. And then we get to more complicated stuff. And I'll walk you through it. Now I'm going to answer the devil's question, the client's question. How do I know that the revenue is really coming from Facebook? So, with plastic attribution, it's really easy. You just go to Google Analytics, you get conversions, e commerce, you have a uh, source medium record. And you see right away um, plastic attribution, and you can see which channel is generating how much revenue. That, that's the basic thing. Uh, last click, by the way, if somebody doesn't know, means that people who clicked on your Facebook ad or on your Facebook uh, update and then went to your website and then bought the converted, they are counted as the last click attributed um, revenue coming from Facebook. Then you can also add assisted conversion. And this is something uh, that's here it starts to get a little bit more complicated because you can see, assuming that you have everything set up and tagged properly, you can see how much are these uh, eight channels contributing as assisting channels. That means if I click on something on Facebook, went to the website, didn't buy, didn't convert. Then, then uh, close the window. A day later, uh, I click on something in the newsletter and came to the website and then converted. Last click would be newsletter, of course, email, and assisted conversion would come on Facebook because Facebook helped in a way, you know, to the conversion. So again, this is easy. You go to Google Analytics, conversion, Google Chat Fund, assisted conversion, and there you see that. Okay, and then we move out a step further in the layers. We're in, in the bright yellow one right now. We use new conversions. Sometimes you don't even have to click on an ad, but it in a way, you know, uh, gets in your head and then you convert later. And some platforms today, like uh, Google Display Network integrated with Google Analytics, or retargeting platforms such as Adderall, we use in our agency, can tell you how many conversions happen after people saw your ads, even if they don't click on them. This is of course even less certain because you know they could make their conversion from any other reason, but they just saw your ad. And then we move to um, the most upper layer and uh, that's branding. People don't even have to see your ad. You can just have followers on Twitter or on Facebook fans, and they can see some great content from you, and they can tell their friends, hey, this is great. And then his friend would go to Google, Google it, go to your website, and will convert without ever seeing our Facebook or Facebook ad. But it, it will be a direct result of your Facebook activities, of course. But this stuff is really complicated to measure, so I'll just skip that. And uh, I'll get back to these layers. So where do you think is that ROI one out of And yes, last week, of course, it's done here. Because here we are going to get some certain that people came from Facebook. And mind you, it doesn't have to be uh, direct sales. 
doesn't have to be products, it can be leads, it can be contacts, uh, it can be filled, filled forms, it can be prospects, it can be email addresses, whatever. If your client can tell you one lead, one filled form is worth 50 euros to me, then hey, if I bring you 30 leads from Facebook, you just multiply it by 50 euros, and you get 1500 euros, and that's that's what you're getting from Facebook. So there's the ROI one, and you calculate of course from last year revenue. And uh, I promise to tell you in this presentation. So what do we do with the client? How do we convince him uh, to start using Facebook as as a platform to you know get uh, customers to convert? So we basically do this. We say, hey. You got three months because you can't really do anything in like in the first weeks. So you have to try and error different stuff, you have to try different ads, see what's working, what's not. So they say, give us three weeks and uh, we'll give you this this little table where uh both taxes and check. It doesn't matter, it's just a spreadsheet where you will immediately see based on the last week. Uh, attribute revenue if Facebook is paying back to you or if it isn't. And if it isn't, by the end of the third month, it's probably not going to work for you at all. I mean, of course, we might not be the best agency in the world, but there is a very little chance that it will work with other uh, agencies. It's not working with other, you know, other agencies. So and if it doesn't work at the end of the three months, you basically know that you shouldn't do social media or you shouldn't do Facebook uh, because it's not paying back to you. And you just get you know three months of trial. It's a quick and dirty trial, and uh, you know immediately it works out. But what's the best thing about it? You get your ROI one. You know you're not wasting your money because it's paying back. But with this approach, you get all that other stuff that Facebook is offering. So, and then all this comes as a nice little bonus. See? You're, you're safe and sound. Your investment is paying back. That's our job. We did that. That's okay. That's cool. But look, you've got all that with. Uh, with So this is the approach we take with our clients. Um, we believe if every other agency would take this approach, it would make the environment much more healthier because you know agencies wouldn't be doing stuff like if you have this goal, you can do stuff like, hey, you paid me fifty thousand crowns, and I got you five thousand pounds, which is great, isn't it? Well, it's not getting you any revenue. It, the client didn't see any single penny from those 5,000 fans. So the fans are pointless, that they're useless. So I believe if everybody has this kind of approach, then we, we all will be much better off. And this is our, our last slide. I hope everybody can read what's written on there. And you, and you, of course, you can because there's a disclaimer, and um, disclaimers are not meant to be read anyway. Um, but I'm a nice person, so I'm going to tell you what's written down there. It says, all of what has been said in my presentation applies to mid-sized e-commerce sites and other online businesses on Facebook. To other social media platforms and other types of businesses, it applies with no guarantee. Um, so, and, and if by any case you are working for an airline, just forget my whole presentation. If you're not, uh, I'll be glad if uh, you will think about an approach I just think you're really into. And if you've got any questions, I'm um, more than ready. Thank you. Hello. Hello, I want to ask a question. What is mid size something? Right. Well, that's a good question. Uh, it can be anything with a turnout um, from, say, uh, 100 
thousand crowns to hundred million crowns uh, a month. Can you tell us any case? Sure. Uh, we have recently introduced this approach to all of our clients. If I mean, if they were ready to comply, if they were not, then too bad. Uh, but we have. Um, I don't. I, I don't have any slides for our numbers. But we have two clothing uh, shops. I mean, e-commerce sites at the moment. And uh, what we try to do is uh, make their Facebook. Uh, in a way that people will engage on, on the Facebook side first, and then second, they will click through uh, the Facebook uh, and from their news feeds to the website, and then they will buy clothes. And um, we are in the second month, so we'll see if, if that works out or not. Uh, but, and if it works out, then I'll make a case study and I'll post it to our website. The uh, very important point of the case studies are the names of the clients. So, who is this? Right. Uh, you probably won't know it because you're not. Nobody here is, is, is probably a target group. It's Avandro Lopez. You can check it out later. So, uh, what is your strategy for using Facebook? Is it display ads? Is it uh, newsfeed? Posts? Uh, you said you want to go beyond just getting fans, so how do you get click throughs? Right. Um, okay, so that's lots of questions. Um, it's a combination, of course. I believe you can really have a successful uh, selling Facebook profile without ads. I don't really believe it's possible. Um, there are a couple of strategies what you can do. And Basically, the main strategy we would apply is you have to have both types of content. Um, you have to have content that's engaging, that's funny pictures, you know, clothes, and stuff like that. And then, because that gets you engagement, and that gets you, you know, more people will see your posts, etc., etc. And then you will have uh, a direct selling post. So um, let's say I would put, uh, you know, a picture of, of, of the clothing with a direct link, and then you can go to the website, and if they like the clothes, they can buy that. That's that's our our basic strategy. Of course, there's a lot of tactics, and it can fall under this umbrella of our approach. Um, this is probably the main one. How does scale change the approach? Yeah, yeah, because uh, you said that it's, it doesn't apply to bigger brands. So, uh, how exactly do you approach the Right, uh, well, the bigger the client, the easier it is. That's my basic uh, answer because with small budgets, you have to really struggle to get uh, any sort of meaningful attention on people. Huge budgets, of course. The operational cost for agency is, is the ratio is getting smaller. So if I have a budget of a million, I can spend, I can work on it for 20 hours. Then you know the the cost for the agency is really tiny. Um, so the leverage is much bigger with uh, bigger budgets. It's actually easier with uh, bigger clients. Well, that's all. Thank you very much.